Good, so we're just going to have a quick chat here about the forthcoming um, retreat planned with the Centre for Spiritual Living in San Jose. And this is called The Music of What Happens, Ancient Wisdom in Times of Chaos. And it's going to be in four sessions over the four Sundays in January. And through, we've, we've had a great collaboration there with Ron Wade, one of the resident mystics over there in the Centre for Spiritual Living in San Jose, an extraordinary man and a polymath and great fun. And through conversations with him, we've come on. Uh, he, he's, he's a great fan of the Stoic philosophers. And one of the great mainstays of the Stoics uh, was around this ancient idea of the four cardinal virtues, the four virtues. Um, so what we're doing is we're going to meld the teachings of the four uh, virtues with some Celtic mythology and also with the poetry and song and story that myself and Michal have been reared in. And we're going to make some extraordinary kind of um, stew from all of this uh, over those four Sundays. Yeah, so that's what's going to happen. What do you think? I, I think that one of the th strands of the four sessions as well should be like, you know, processing all the inherited shared traditions we have in poetry and mythology and Irish traditional music or um, general wisdom, ancient wisdom too, but also like original creativity, um, you know, because I'll be reciting some of the poetry I've written in the last couple of years. And um, and even on, we should dig out some of our old songs, you know, that we that we oh, yeah. that had that wisdom. We, we had that um, great store, uh, great store of English language pop songs, folk songs that we wrote yeah. uh, early in our careers, which have great old wisdom about adversity. In them. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, the the whole thing about the virtues, I mean, virtue is like a scary word these days, like morality, and ethics. And uh, I'll tell you what, the scarier word than virtue, virtuosity, you know, virtuosity. And, it's this thing that you're not supposed to kind of do um, only in Ireland. You're only supposed to be virtuosic if someone twists your arm three times, you know, so. Yeah, virtuosity is supposed to be just for the the virtuous. Yeah, yeah. But the thing about virtuosity is that actually, in a sense, some of the roots of it go back to the idea of it being like a warrior code, like medieval chivalry. And chivalry was a warrior code, a knightly code from the French word chevalier the horse, a horse knight, uh, one who rode a horse into battle. And so there's an idea that um, virtuosity is from the Latin root vir, which is man, that idea of this sort of manly warrior code. So the virtues were there to protect you in battle. These were there to prolong your life. So if you were going into battle, you would put on the virtues almost like a coat of armor. They would teach you when faced with adversity, you move this way you know, move that way, deal with this in this way. So it was supposed to be a, a code of um, of defense in a way, in times of adversity. Well, the four cardinal virtues, one was prudence, uh, one was temperance, one was courage, and the other was justice. So yeah. um, I That's suppose right. prudence and justice is, is mercy if you mix them both together. I suppose. Yeah, yeah, and the, they're... The, we can relate them back to Plato uh, in ancient Greece, but they were probably even before those times. You know, that's when they were first written down. And then they were taken up again in medieval Europe, the scholastic philosophers. We had Thomas Aquinas doing the big Catholic Christian formulation of the cardinal virtues. And um, but I think today we can resurrect these cardinal virtues and reapply them to our modern world, actually. Yeah. And so they've become co-opted and so steeped in complexity and confusion. I think we need to um, wash them out and uh, look at them again. And it's fascinating because the medievals had placed these virtues um, in order of uh, importance. And, and so you had to go through certain stages in order to attain a certain virtue before you could move on to the next level in a sense. Mm -hmm. And so there's this extraordinary wisdom. They've dissected a whole sort of taxonomy of human um, uh, interface with life and its complexities and its temptations, its pitfalls. And these virtues are designed in a way as a sort of a training ground um, to fortify yourself, to build yourself up so that when these things happen in the chaos of real life, you'll know exactly how to act to ultimately it's about attaining happiness and living the happy life.
Yeah, and finding shelter in chaos. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned the word chaos because a really interesting strand of these four Sundays together in January is the idea of chaos and underlying structures and how we unlock shelter in times of chaos, how we still our inner and outer waters. And uh, the, the word virtue, chaos, art and spirituality are the four virtues of these four Sundays together. So um, it's just great to have kind of an interfaith approach to spirituality and and theological wisdom and see what we can glean from that and the poetry and the song that we've inherited and know of that we'll present and uh, to talk about chaos as well as a beautiful poetic theme to um, to talk about how we keep our virtue and fortify our virtue um, which is all about stillness and direction as well, you know. Yeah, and chaos. the necessity of chaos, the vitality of chaos. One of the great pieces of chaos we'll be experiencing is breakout rooms where you'll be co yeah. chaotically assigned a conversational partner and we'll give you some rough, very vague, confusing questions per to, to pose this conversational partner where you can overhear yourself saying something profound. Um, and so again, out of that chaos of meeting a stranger, as well too there is an extraordinary vitality uh fertility that comes out of the ground the chaotic ground where you have a conversation with someone that is unscripted you know so we're going to be the virtue, actually, virtue of courage will have to be shown just at that will, moment the virtuosity of conversation too yeah. yeah yeah it's extraordinary i mean when you just put two people together um on in in the context of having a real conversation um it's, it's they have been they have been great all of the breakout rooms that uh i've been a part of in in these new uh the new zoom generation that we that we are um if anyone hasn't experienced it, it it's really wonderful even still there's a there's a butterflies in the stomach when when you're being uh you know going through the matrix being uh, paired off with someone randomly and it's always such a heartwarming experience just like you know just like being um, going on stage uh, or performing or teaching, uh, that human connection is something that we're, we're missing. And of course, one of the ironies of life and chaos is you don't know what you're missing. So you don't know if you're missing something that you don't know you're not having. Um, I'm all, I've always been fascinated with this. Um, and, and this period of isolation that we've been going through in the last six months is, is in a nutshell, it's people don't know how to we don't know how to articulate what we're missing because we don't know exactly what we're missing. All of the things were happening of their own volition, apparently, and in, in no structured order. So you're unable to point out exactly the chaotic nature of, of what you were, how you were um, fulfilling yourself or, or rejuvenating yourself with all of these social connections that we were taking for granted, of course. But I'm fascinated yeah. with this idea of not being able to pinpoint what you're missing. Fear, is that like FOMO? It's an ultimate FOMO, but FOMO, like uh, directionless FOMO, FOMO uh, unilateral FOMO, indeed. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. <laughs> FOMO, yeah, FOMO. I, That's or the like... word of 2020 for sure, yeah, FOMO. <laughs> it's, a, it's actually COMO, like knowledge of missing out. It's like... COMO. FOMO. No it's more. Fact. KN, fact. like no more. Yeah, oh no, K, okay, man. Yeah, okay. Um, F, F, it's the fact of missing out, you know? It's actually... It was Domo, the delight of missing out at the very beginning of what, for the artistic and, and pragmatic sensibilities. I felt like it was a delight, but then it becomes, um, yeah, we're a different type of busy now and, and a different type of chaos. You know, I was talking about that as we get busier on these uh, Zoom calls and they're feeding us on many levels that we're learning to uh, create the enzymes to break down the language of these new online gatherings. But um, we're, we're definitely, uh, we, don't, we don't know. Uh, what we're what we're not getting great yeah well let's find out let's mm. find out this january <laughs> for I, Sunday. What we're not getting. I like that old. i like that I like and that. it's going to be in a wonderful gathering of people so there'll be people from all yeah. over the center for spiritual livings network and um other very precisely self-selected souls so really look forward to to meeting you all for that and um and doing it again in the future Great. See you there.